Growing up in New York, uh, on Long Island, didn't really have a lot of exposure to wrestling um, early years. My dad was a very good athlete. He was all state in football and track. And, and then my mom, growing up, she was just the biggest source of support no matter what it is. She didn't put any judgment on things. She just supported me unconditionally. She loved me unconditionally. And, and um, she made me appreciate everything without having to jam it down my throat. The first year in my, my school district that we had an opportunity to play sports was seventh grade. And the only sports teams that my school had were, were the track team and the wrestling team. So I had a, a friend that had wrestled for a bunch of years since he was five or six years old. And he said, hey, why don't you come out for the wrestling team? And ironically enough, only wrestling that I knew was what I saw on TV. So literally, I thought it was Jimmy Snuka and Hulk Hogan and all those guys. So you know, starting to think of my, my, my nickname and what costume I was going to wear. Um, when I got there, obviously, that changed pretty quick. The, the first thing we did was start running. And everyone that knows me, I don't like running. I didn't like it when I was competing. I don't like it now. And, you know, I didn't like it back then. But it was something about that first day when Coach ran in and we were running around my middle school. And uh, I, I, it, I don't know what it was, but it just grabbed me. And I knew this was going to be something that I was going to do for a long time. So every day I came to practice. I got my butt kicked every day. And I just wanted to get better and continue to work hard. And slowly but surely, I started to improve. I wrestled freestyle Greco throughout the spring and summer train year round, finally made it to varsity in 10th grade. So when I started having more success, I made a, a, a couple of international teams. When I was in 10th grade, I made the cadet world team. Even at an early age, he demonstrated dedication and a work ethic that paid off in a silver medal performance. The next year I came back as an 11th grader, I made it to the state final. Then in 11th, uh, 12th grade, came back, won a state championship, was undefeated. After the Full scholar season, I end up winning uh, the Junior World Championship. So that year-round wrestling from seventh grade just really instilled in me what I needed to do to be the best, and it helped me to grow. It exposed me to a lot of different people, exposed me to a lot of different styles and great coaches. My high school coach is the biggest inspiration that I had in the sport. Um, he was the one that laid the foundation. Chose to go to Penn State, you know, after high school. Where it came down to was the place where I felt that I, it fit best. Rich Lorenzo was actually one of the coaches that recruited me, and he's one of the best men that I, I know ever. And um, John Fritch was the guy that actually coached me. Hashiro Ishii, he was the one that was so much more hands-on, and you know the, his training methods were, were, were very, very successful, um, but they were definitely un unorthodox. When I got there, it wasn't easy. You know, I had a rough year. I lost 17 matches in my freshman year, which was more matches than I lost in my entire high school career. The next thing was, all right, I'm never going to lose again, and put the work in. I had the resources and the, and the tools and the coaches and the workout partners to make sure that I had not only just said it, but I, I was able to go after it. And, and the next year, I was undefeated. I was a national champ, and it kept on going. And, you know, the first time I won national, I was 19 years old. I had no clue. I didn't really get to enjoy it because I had three, you know, three more years left of wrestling. Um, so I just kind of went in and went back to it. But my senior year, I remember, is just really enjoyed that, that, that experience. And after I won my senior year, um, I jumped off the stage. My parents were sitting up a couple of rows up in the upper deck, and I started sprinting up the steps and going up there and, and, and being able to hug my mom and, and just say thank you and have her there. That was really a, a great moment for me. In college, uh, undefeated as a sophomore, undefeated as a, as a senior, <clears throat> but he really, in my opinion, made his mark internationally. You know, I was pretty disappointed in 1997 with my performance. So I came back and I was, I was really fired up about folks on training. And I, I would go and train with Bruce and I'd go down to Lehigh and train where Greg Strobel was overseeing me. McCoy had a really good training plan. And he thought of this all himself and had what I called the best of both worlds. He was a resident athlete in Colorado Springs and he was an assistant coach for me at Lehigh. So he would go to Colorado Springs, get the technical work and the high level training that he needed, and then he would come to Lehigh and he would get the grind that you get with a college wrestling program. His intelligence uh, probably is his greatest gift. Um, he thought his way through a match. He used his athletic ability uh, and his uh, 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 technical ability. Went to the World Championships, you know, young, excited, first World Championship team, and I just thought I was going to go out there and win. Got out there, made it to the semifinals of the World Championship, and won the match, and they overturned it. So I ended up finishing fourth, and it hit me hard, but at the same time, it's like, hey, it's my first team. I got a lot of teams ahead of me. 1999 comes around, and I end up getting beat off the team, and Stephen Neal won, and he won a World Championship. 
And now I've got a world championship champion in my weight class. National champion. He's already won the first round. If he wins one more, he will be on the Olympic team. And Stephen Neal will be a spectator. But it, Neal has scored on it twice. And there's Comes McCoy. Back. Answers back. Kerry McCoy is your Olympian at heavyweight. I had super high hopes and I went out there and fell a little bit short, lost 8-7 in a controversial match in the quarterfinals of 2000 and that guy ended up winning a silver medal and I was going to be done after 2000. Um, what really pushed the envelope, the world championship was supposed to be in New York in 2001. So it was a big thing, it was my home state, my home country and came back in and made the world team in 2001 and I was ready to win a world title. And, um, 9 11 happened. We were in limbo for two months and wrestled, you know, going from September in, in New York to November in Bulgaria and went out there and finished fourth at the World Championships. And I knew at that point I was, you know, I was, okay, I was just going to go one more year because it was in New York. 2003 came back, made the world team, and took second. And that was a bittersweet thing. But I knew the ultimate goal was to win Olympic gold. And came back the next year and made the Olympic team. And, and competitively, I was focused, I was ready to go, I had a great year, I was ready to go out there and, and, and do well, but um, I also wanted to make sure I enjoyed the experience and, and um, I had the same results, lost in the quarterfinals in overtime, but the overall enjoyment of the Olympic Games and the Olympic experience was definitely um, on, on a higher level. So my biggest source of, of, of inspiration and joy outside of the sport right now, which contributes to the sport, is my family, my lovely wife Abby, my son Gabe, and my daughter Mila, they're, they're just, they're why I do everything. You know, although I didn't win a world title, win an Olympic title, um, the experience and the journey that I had through my Olympic, or through my international career, has definitely been, been amazing and um, really made a big difference for where I am today. I know the people that are in, that have been honored in the, in the past, and the people that will be honored in the future, just to be mentioned with those names, it's, it's, it's just, you know, can't really describe it. And I'm very blessed and very fortunate to have this opportunity.